Arts is in England on vacation right now, and tonight on Scan we are looking at Canada's national television microwave network. Now, these are what we call station break slides. They're slides in our studios, but you see them as pictures at home. The stations are scattered all over Canada, and they're both privately and CCC owned, working together to bring you a national television service. And tomorrow, Dominion Day, all of them will be able to broadcast the same program, at the same time, from sea to sea, at 3,900 miles, the longest single microwave network in the world. A microwave is, oh, how long would it be? About as long as an average cigarette. And that's a very short radio wave. Now, to carry it across the country, there are television towers, or microwave towers, spread right across the country, 3,900 miles, remember, about every 30 miles right across. That makes about 139 towers. Now, the last link was a very difficult one. It was the one that went across the Rockies. And there were problems there which were confronted, met, and beat. One of them, for instance, was at the top of Lost Forest Mountain in British Columbia. They had to blast the top off to make a bait for the television tower. There is the blast they made now. Presumably, the top had to be flat and firm to take the base of that tower. One of the other problems was at Dog Mountain, where they had to set up a cable car, which took men and equipment, heavy equipment, to the television towers that were being built two miles away and one mile up. Now let me read just a short item from the current issue of the CBC Times, where the general manager of the CBC, Mr. Wimette, is quoted as he spoke at a recent closed-circuit demonstration of the microwave network. He said, many people have worked for this day. Besides seven of the major Canadian telephone companies which make up the Trans-Canada telephone system, there were the Canadian Pacific and Canadian National Railway. The telephone companies have built the coast-to-coast -coast microwave system, and the railways have built, among other TV links, much of the French network, and next year will provide circuits to Newfoundland, further extension of the longest television network in the world. Now, these towers we've been talking about, they are carrying 2,400 long-distance calls and two television programs at the same time. This they can do. They may not be doing it all the time. Now, these are actual broadcasting stations. The ones marked with a white circle are those already existing in the English language network. The black, or rather the white square, the connected French network station. The most English Canadians probably forget that Quebec is a thriving and dynamic broadcasting industry and turns out some marvelous programs. There are, oh, roughly a dozen or so English and French stations to be added to the network. And they range from CJCD in Cape Breton, right across through Nova Scotia, the Maritimes, through Quebec, down into Toronto, Ontario, Northern Ontario, Manitoba, Saskatchewan, Alberta, and into British Columbia, winding up at CHEK TV in Victoria. Now, so much for charts and such. What exactly do these towers themselves do? Well, they relay the microwave at the speed of light. A receiving antenna, you've probably seen many of them across the country, there may be one very near you. They look something like this. And there's another one. Now these will transmit pictures from one of these antennas to another one further across the country. The signal is received here and goes down through the base. And in this hut, the picture is amplified almost a million times. And the picture is quality checked, likewise the sound. And then they're retransmitted up another cable to another transmitter point onto the next relay station and eventually to the local television station in your neighborhood and via the transmitter to your own home television set. Now, what will be the first program? It bears a rather cryptic title, Memo to Champlain. Now, you'll see it tomorrow afternoon on scan. Tonight, we were going to talk to its producer, Norman Caton, but he's very busy right at the moment. But we will talk to its writer, Len Peterson. 
And here in Studio One.